Hi there, welcome back. In this video, what I'm going to do is compare the speed and accuracy of various implementations of the gradient boosting algorithm. And we're going to look at scikit-learn, we're going to look at XGBoost, at CatBoost, and LightGBM. And we're going to see which one is more accurate and which one is the fastest. Okay? Now, of course, this depends a lot on the type of data set and the type of problem that you want to solve. So you cannot generalize that a specific implementation is the best overall. But we're going to train a classifier on the same data set and we're going to use a classifier from each library. And then we're going to see which one is the winner when it comes to both speed and accuracy. And again, as I'm saying, is not going to generalize very well on any type of data set or any type of problem, but nevertheless the results will be very interesting. First of all, we know that gradient boosting is an ensemble algorithm that fits boosted decision trees in order to minimize an error gradient. So it fits a series of models and then it fits each successive model in order to minimize the error of the previous model. It's an extremely efficient algorithm and for many years it has been used in Kaggle competitions for the winning solution. So therefore, I definitely encourage you to explore gradient boosting when it comes to your machine learning problem and see whether you can get good results for your particular type of task. Now, as you can imagine, there are many implementations of the gradient boosting algorithm available in Python and perhaps one of the most used implementations is the version provided by the XGBoost library. And I talked about that in a previous video and I'm going to put the link down below in the description so you can check that video out as well. And of course, Scikit-Learn has an implementation as well and we also have other libraries like, as I mentioned, LightGBM and CatBoost, they offer their own implementation. But the thing is, depending on your project and depending on your data set, you might use one or another based on the results that you might get. So my advice is that regardless of the results that we're going to get in this video, on your particular problem, try out multiple implementations. Try out scikit-learn implementation, try out the XGBoost implementation, the LightGBM and CatBoost, and then try to see exactly which one fits best uh, for your specific problem. But in this video, what I want to do, I want to do a fun test in which we're going to try out all of them on a classification problem and then see which one performs best in terms of accuracy and speed. But before I start, I just want to thank you for subscribing to our channel and for liking these videos because we really want to help you guys grow in the data science and machine learning space. We want to do practical videos that can help you in your data science journey. So don't forget to go and check out other videos on my channel and see which ones might actually help you so you can perfect your skills. All right, now let's go back and do this fun test to see which algorithm between the scikit-learn implementation, XGBoost implementation, the CatBoost implementation and the LightGBM implementation works best, provides the best accuracy and is the fastest on our classification problem. Let's go. The first thing that we need to do is just import the basic libraries and now let's create a classification data set formed out of 100,000 samples, 20 features in which we're going to have 15 informative features and five redundant features. Let's go ahead and create this data set and we can also check the data set. Let's go ahead and check the X. As you can see, it's formed out of 20 features and if we check the shape, we have 100,020 features. Now, in order to record the accuracy and speed, we're going to use two dictionaries. We're going to first look at the scikit-learn implementation, okay, because this is the most common because it's scikit-learn and everybody uses scikit-learn, okay, and scikit-learn implements a class called gradient boosting classifier. And we're going to import that as well as the cross-validation score and the repeated stratified k-fold because this is what we're going to use for our cross-validation. So let's go ahead and import these and here, what we're creating, we're creating a model that is the gradient boosting classifier. We're not going to specify any hyperparameters. We're just going to use the baseline implementation with the defaults because we, we really want to compare the bare bones implementations of these gradient boosting algorithms, regardless of 
the library. So in order to record the time, first I'm going to set the start and then we're going to do our cross validation where we're going to use a repeated stratified K fold and we're going to have five splits and we're going to repeat it twice. And of course, we're going to use a random state so that we always get the same results. I think five splits and repeating it twice is perfectly enough for a cross validation when it comes to just to test out a specific algorithm. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to get the score. We're going to use the cross validation score and we're going to pass in the model. We're going to pass in our X and Y. And of course, we're going to score the accuracy and then provide it with the actual cross validation. And then we're going to record the time that it took for this to run in our uh, speed dictionary. And we're going to use the current time that it will be when this will be finished minus the start time. And of course, we're going to also record the accuracy as the mean of the scores. And of course, we're going to round them to three decimal points. And then we're also going to print them just so that we can view them nicely in this uh, notebook. Let's go ahead and run this. And then let's see exactly what mean accuracy. We're going to also see the standard deviation for all those scores as well as the runtime. It's going to take a little bit of time and we're going to see exactly how many seconds it takes for the gradient boosting classifier from scikit-learn to actually fit this data. And of course, run through all of these cross validation folds. And we see the result is 89.4% the accuracy, we get a standard deviation of 0 0.003 and the runtime is 82 seconds. Now, of course, the runtime can vary, but it's going to be always around 80, let's say, seconds, okay? And the accuracy is pretty good, like 89%, it's, it's proper. But let's see another implementation also from the scikit-learn library, and we're going to use the implementation called histogram gradient boosting classifier. Now, this is an alternative approach to gradient boosting implemented in scikit-learn and it's based on the LightGBM library and we're going to check LightGBM later on. But the important thing here when it comes to the histogram based approach is that it's a little bit faster than the normal gradient boosting implementation from scikit-learn. But it's experimental and you're also going to need to import enable histogram gradient boosting and then you can import hist gradient boosting classifier in order for this to work. So Let's import these. And of course, I'm just creating a histogram gradient boosting classifier. And of course, everything else is just the same. I'm using the same splits, the same number of repeats. And then I'm recording the, the speed and the accuracy, and then I'm printing it out. So let's see exactly how long this takes compared to the 82 seconds that it took for our normal gradient boosting classifier from scikit-learn. I didn't even stop talking and it already finished compared to our previous implementation. So it only took four seconds and the accuracy is perfect. It's, it's really good, right? So we have 96.4 compared to 89.4. So just by looking at these results, we can always choose to use this histogram based approach to gradient boosting rather than the baseline implementation from scikit-learn because one, the speed is a lot faster and the accuracy is a lot better. So clearly this is a winner when it comes to the scikit-learn implementations. Now, what we need to do now is look at XGBoost and see whether XGBoost can offer us anything compared to what scikit-learn already offers. Let's go ahead and of course you need to install uh, XGBoost either with pipenv or pip. I already installed it and I'm going to import the XGB classifier. And of course, I'm creating the model, which is the XGB classifier. And then I'm performing the same things, recording the speed and accuracy and printing them out. Let's uh, see how this performs and see how long it takes compared to the previous implementations. Let's see if XGBoost is faster than any of the other implementations and whether the accuracy is better than the previous ones. All right, this one takes a little bit of time. So it's now four seconds clearly but it's 34.3 seconds. And of course, this is like a rough estimate because 
whenever you're going to run it multiple times, you're going to get some differences. Let me actually just run it uh, one more time just so that we, we can see that the runtime can vary from one run to another. Let's just run it and see whether we get 34 or we get less or more. Okay, we ran it again and as you can see, it's not 34, it's 39.9. But as you can see, it's always around that number of seconds. Plus minus, I don't know, 10 seconds, let's say. So the mean accuracy is 97.6. So compared to our 96.4, it's better. It's not crazy better, but it's nevertheless, it's better. So up until now, XGBoost is the best algorithm to solve this particular problem when it comes to gradient boosting. Of course, now we have this 97.6 and our runtime is 39.9. .9. Of course, it's not the fastest, but it's not the slowest either. So, so far, XGBoost overall, I think is the best when it comes to balancing out the performance and the speed. And of course, everybody uses XGBoost. So now you might understand why XGBoost is preferred by so many people when it comes to solving uh, these type of problems with uh, gradient boosting. Now, the next one on our list is LightGBM. And LightGBM is a very nice implementation done by Microsoft in which they improve on the speed and also on the accuracy of this uh, gradient boosting algorithm. So it's a very, very good library to use when it comes to solving problems with gradient boosting. Now, the primary benefit of LightGBM is the changes that they've done to the training algorithm so that it makes the process dramatically faster. So definitely try LightGBM to see how it compares at least to XGBoost. I already installed it, but you can install it with pip or pipenv and you're going to need to import LGBM classifier. And of course, we're doing the same thing. We're creating a model with that specific classifier and we're running it on the same folds. So, so we have five folds and two repeats. Now let's run it and see exactly how long it takes. Now, because it's called light GBM, it should be fast. So let's see how fast it is. And I didn't even stop talking and it already finished and it's three seconds point two. Okay. So this is the fastest from what I can see because the implementation from scikit-learn, the histogram based implementation took 4.4. Okay. So clearly light GBM is the fastest option that you have for gradient boosting so far. Okay, we're, we need to see cat boost, but something tells me that cat boost is going to take a little bit longer. Again, the accuracy is 96.3%, which is not the best. Of course, XGBoost had the best accuracy so far, but it's not far off. Okay, so sometimes you want to optimize over speed rather than accuracy. And personally, many times I prefer to do so because I, in, in practice, in real uh, data science projects, speed is very important. Now, when you go to Kaggle and you want to have the best accuracy because you're competing with other people, of course, you want the best accuracy and speed matters less. So then you would go definitely for an XGBoost. But for practical problems, I definitely think light GBM is a little bit better from this perspective, at least for this type of problems. Okay. Of course, for your data set, XGBoost might be better, but you need to, you need to try out both. Now let's move and see cat boost. Now cat boost is a, also a third party library and is developed by Yandex. And the benefit of cat boost is that of course, except for the computational improvements, it also has support for categorical input variables. So definitely cat boost is a very, very good implementation that you need to look at when you try to solve a problem with gradient boosting. So let's see how cat boost performs against XGBoost, against LightGBM and against in the scikit uh, learn implementations of the gradient boosting algorithm. Of course, you need to import cat boost and then uh, first, you need to install it, of course, and you can install it either with pip or pipenv. And then you can import the cat boost classifier from cat boost. And here we're going to perform the same cross validation that we performed for the previous implementations. We have five splits and we have two repeats for our repeated stratified K fold. And then we're going to calculate the scores with our cross val score method. And then we're going to update our dictionaries 
both the speed and accuracy and then we're going to print the mean accuracy and then the standard deviation as well as the runtime. Let's go ahead and run this and you're going to see that now we're going to spend a little bit more time because cat boost unfortunately is a little bit slower than the previous implementations that we walked through previously. But let's see if cat boost is better when it comes to accuracy because okay maybe it's gonna be slower but let's see if it's more accurate because if it's more accurate this might be very very good for you to use for example in a Kaggle competition compared to I don't know let's say like GBM or the scikit learn implementation but let's wait and see exactly how it performs against the previous ones All right, so this one takes a little bit more than I expected, so let's wait until it finishes. All right, so cat boost finished, and let's check the accuracy. As we can see, the accuracy is 98.3. So this is the best accuracy that we got so far when we compared all of these gradient boosting libraries. So definitely cat boost is the top performer among all of these when it comes to our classification problem, but the problem is that the runtime was a lot, okay? So it was crazy slow. It took it 232 seconds, which is by far the slowest type of implementation. Now, of course, for your problem, you can choose based on your particular circumstances. Either you want a more performant algorithm or you want faster runtimes. And this is just based on the, the task that you are faced with. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and print out, print out this dictionary the accuracy dictionary in descending order for accuracy. So we see which one is the best performing model. And we can definitely see that cat boost is the best with 98.3. Then we get XG boost with 97.6. And then we get the next ones, the histogram gradient boosting, light GBM and gradient boosting. And let's see the speed as well. And we're going to look at this in ascending order because here we want the lowest number to be first, okay? We want it to be the fastest algorithm for solving our particular problem. So we can see that light GPM is the fastest, and then we have the histogram-based gradient boosting, and then we have XG boost, gradient boosting, and of course, cat boost is the worst performing. So you see, you cannot get the best overall algorithm or the best implementation of this gradient boosting algorithm because it depends on what you want to achieve with it. Now, personally, I kind of switch between XGBoost and LightGBM in my, in, my, in my problems because first of all, LightGBM is fast and it also offers very good accuracy. But also I prefer XGBoost many times because of its, uh, of its better accuracy overall. So, depends. I mean, it's up to you to decide which is the best implementation for your particular problem, but definitely try out all of them before you actually do the end implementation, try out all of them and then decide which one is best for your particular use case. Now, I really hope that this was fun to you guys because now you have a better understanding how to choose between gradient boosting uh, implementations and I'll see you in the next video.